we want to solve the given equation over the interval from zero to two pi. We have two cosine two x equals two sine squared x plus one. We'll perform a substitution for cosine two x. We notice how we have three identities to choose from for cosine two theta. But since the right side of our equation contains sine squared x, let's use this identity here where cosine two theta equals one minus two sine squared theta. That way the equation will only contain sine squared. So if we perform the substitution, we would have two times one minus two sine squared x equals two sine squared x plus one. And now we'll clear the parentheses, that would give us two minus four sine squared x equals two sine squared x plus one. Notice how the equation only contains sine squareds, so let's get the sine squared terms on the same side of the equation. Let's go ahead and add four sine squared x to both sides. Let's also move the constants to the left, so we'll subtract one at the same time on both sides. So now if we simplify, notice how this would be zero and this would be zero, giving us one equals six sine squared x. And now we'll isolate sine squared x by dividing both sides by six, which would give us one sixth equals sine squared x. And now to solve for sine x, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. Notice how we would have plus or minus the square root of one six on the left. So simplifying here, we'd have plus or minus one divided by square root six equals sine x. Which means we want to find all the angles in this interval where the sine function value would be negative one divided by square root six or when the sine function value is equal to positive one divided by square root six. Let's find these angles on the next slide. Well if sine x equals negative one divided by square root six, if we take the inverse sine and arc sine on both sides of the equation, this would give us x equals inverse sine or arc sine of negative one divided by square root six and if we solve this equation for x, we would have x equals inverse sine or arc sine of positive one divided by square root six. And since we won't find these sine function values on the unit circle, we'll have to use the calculator to get decimal approximations. Let's first verify that we are in radian mode, so we'll press the mode key. Notice how radian is highlighted. So we'll go back to the home screen. And we'll begin by pressing second sine for inverse sine and then negative one divided by square root six. Right arrow, parenthesis, and enter. So this is telling us that when x is approximately negative zero point four two zero five radians, the sine function value would be negative one divided by square root six. Even though this angle is out of the interval that we're trying to solve the equation over, we can still use this to find solutions. So let's go ahead and write that down. We know x could be approximately negative zero point four two zero five radians. Let's go ahead and sketch this in standard position. So this would be the initial side. And the terminal side may be somewhere in here. And the angle of rotation would be in this direction. But the important part to recognize here is that the reference angle for this angle would be zero point four two zero five, which means one of our solutions, we'll call x sub one, over the interval from zero to two pi, notice this interval includes zero and does not include two pi, would be this angle here. So to find this first solution, we would take two pi radians and subtract the reference angle of zero point four two zero five radians. So we'd have two pi minus 0.4205, let's go back to the calculator. So two pi minus 0.4205 gives us approximately 
5.8627 radians. But remember, sine theta is equal to y over r, and because y is negative in both the third and fourth quadrants, if we sketch the same reference angle in the third quadrant, we can find a second solution where the sine function value would be negative one divided by square root six. So if we sketch the terminal side here, or again the reference angle would be 0 0.4205 radians, this angle would also have the same sine function value. Notice the y coordinates on these terminal sides would be the same. So to find this angle, we would take pi radians and add the reference angle. So we'll say x sub two is approximately equal to pi radians plus the reference angle of 0 0.4205. And now we'll go back to the calculator. So now we have pi plus 0 0.4205 which gives us approximately 3.5621 radians. So these are the two angles in this interval that have a sine function value of negative one divided by square root six. We now need to find the angles where the sine function value would be positive one divided by square root six. So back to the calculator. We'll press second sine for inverse sine and then positive one divided by square root six. Enter. Notice how this is giving us approximately 0 0.4205 radians, which would be in the first quadrant. So we'll say x sub three is approximately 0 0.4205 radians. Now this shouldn't be a surprise because the angle down here in the fourth quadrant that had the same reference angle had a negative sine function value. So if we had this angle here in the first quadrant with the same reference angle, the only difference is the sine function value would be positive. So that would be this angle here, but y is also positive in the second quadrant. So if we sketch the same reference angle in the second quadrant, we can find another solution in this interval that has the same positive sine function value. So the angle would terminate approximately here, where again this reference angle again is 0 0.4205. The measure of this angle from here to here would be pi radians minus the reference angle of 0 0.4205. So our fourth solution would be approximately pi minus our approximate reference angle of 0 0.4205. And back to the calculator one more time. So we have pi and then minus 0.4205 which gives us approximately 2.7211 radians. Which means we have four solutions to our equation over the given interval. One, two, three, and four. I hope you found this helpful.